everybody, I'm me, I'm me. Um, I was actually a student of food science and nutrition here in UCC and I had actually left for a couple of years um, but it was when I was a student I recognised that you know, there was a real lack of healthy options for people to have for lunch um, or for dinner. So I started working on a range of veggie burgers, kind of by accident, I used to make them for my vegetarian friends that we had barbecue. Uh, brought them into the office one day and everyone was like, oh, they look really nice, will you make us some? So I started doing a bit of research and kind of looked around in the supermarket and realised that there was a real lack of a healthy veggie burger that didn't have loads of salt and sugar. So to test this theory I had, I started doing the farmer's market in Sibirin every Saturday while I was working full time. Um, if you ever want to try doing the farmer's market, like, don't take the middle of November to start because it's really cold. It was pouring rain and the wind was absolutely howling. So, you know, I didn't actually expect to sell a whole load that day, but we actually sold out. And the real test was for the same customers to come back the following week to buy the products, which they did. Um, so, this was our very, very first packaging here. So, it was just all about the natural ingredients, uh, just sold from a piece of paper. That was about 2008. The following year, we did some work on the D's brand and brought the food to. The kind of strategy at that time was I want to get this food into the hands of and mouths as, as many people as I possibly can. And the way to do that was go to uh, events like the Skibbering Music Festival, um, agricultural shows, stuff like that, where people could actually taste the product in a pit of bread, almost like a healthy fast food option. Um, in 2008, I went to my local enterprise board and got grant funding for a small uh, in kitchen unit in Ballon College. So at that time, I had to find <coughs> matching funding because uh, the banks weren't lending. So I ended up getting fun funding from a microfinance company called First Step. So the banks gave me um, <coughs> 20,000 and I got 20,000. Well, First Step gave me 20,000 and I got matching funding of 20,000 from the bank or from the enterprise board as well. So that meant that I could fit out a small unit and start production. What I didn't realize back then in 2008 is I didn't have any packaging, so I had nothing to sell out of the unit, so I kept having to do the farmers' market food festivals. I completely underestimated how long it would take to get the packaging retail ready. Um, we had a couple of designers, it didn't really work out for us. They were good corporate designers, they weren't good food designers, and they didn't really know um, how to package a food product. So that like, took ages. Um, in 2010, in 2008, we won an award for best growth potential. That was when we just had a business idea. And then in 2010, we really <coughs> got some really good PR when we got onto Dragon's Den. And we also got funding at that point to get a gas flush packaging machine, which would extend our shelf life. When we got that, we were finally able to service the uh, central distribution warehouses of the retailers. So. We got listed with Mossgraves, um, we got listed with Superquin, Dons, and finally in 2011 we started playing Tesco, which was kind of the biggie for us. Um, we got a national organic award last year, and we were finalists in some other awards. Now, what all these awards mean is it's free PR, so you get like valuable column inches in newspapers, so it's it's almost it's al almost like free advertising. Um, this year we've done some things like <coughs> extra fashion show in Berlin now. It's just me in the business, so I didn't physically go over to Berlin and uh, cater to loads of people at the show, but I, I read a, an outside cater company who represented me and a promotional girl. So what this meant was from Ireland, like we were able to interact with people on the Echo uh, fashion show Facebook page, <coughs> tell them about our products. So, you know, we didn't physically have to be there and it kind of makes the world a small place really. Um, getting the listings in supermarkets, it's, it's quite difficult, but if you're doing something that's a little bit different, it makes it easier. So there's no point going in with, oh, here's another delicious, delicious jam that I've made, or lasagna. Um, from the start, you really need to know who your customers are and why they're buying your product, because when you go in front of a buyer and say Tesco's or Musgraves, like, they don't know your product. They might even know who your customers are. And they went, oh, look, we already have Lynn McCartney veggie burgers. We don't really need another veggie burger. But once you can prove, look, ours are different, they don't have gluten, they don't have wheat, and they're very low salt and sugar, and they're really naturally and minimally processed, so it's a completely different product. 
So it's about educating not only the buyers, but proving your market to them and making sure that your customers know, know about you and why they're buying you. Um, in 2009, these are the two retail packs that we launched into the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And we started to expand the range then last year with a range of one-pot ready meals. Uh, we use something on the packaging, some people say it's good, some people say it's not good, it's QR code scanning. Um, we have it on the bottom of the pack, now we do reward people with coupons, it's basically scan this and you get some coupons in the post. So that brings people, when somebody scans that code on pack, it brings people to a MailChimp uh, sign up page. So MailChimp is another free um, thing that you can use. So once they join up, we use another tracking, uh, another free website called deliver.com, that's D-E-L-I-V-R.com. So that actually tracks data from the scan. So from the time of scanning, say if, if we can see a load of people are scanning at around one o'clock on a Tuesday, we can kind of infer that they're eating our products for lunchtime. Or if they're having a maybe Thursday at 8 o'clock, we can then go, okay, maybe they're having them after college or after the gym or something or for dinner time. So that gives us very valuable information as to what the customers are actually doing with our products at home. Another thing the data gives us is that, you know, it, it can say, okay, we're scanned down to the town land, so it can be somewhere in UK or Dublin. So if you see loads of scans coming from a particular place, maybe that's a really good place to do your next promotional event, like an in-store demo or some kind of uh, in-store activation. Um, this year, uh, we did some research through, uh, we used SurveyMonkey and we would, we would keep in contact with our customers by doing, um, you know, 10 questions, just a survey about, we would ask them, you know, what are we doing that you like? What's the one thing that we're doing that you really don't like? What could we be better at? Um, and we get some re really good information from them. Uh, lots of people felt that the meals were really nice, but about 50% said that they would prefer to have maybe a rice layer or something on the bottom. So we looked into um, quinoa, which is a really high protein grain. Uh, we pitched it to Tesco, saying we had a kind of a twist on our, our meals that were already launched, and they agreed to take it as an exclusive product for us um, until February of next year. Now, building a relationship with a buyer like that um, is really good for us. In return, uh, because we did an exclusive product, they gave us loads of uh, free advertising on their Facebook page. Um, they also put us in, you know, the press news that comes in your door with all the Tesco offers on it. So they gave us a really big space in that. So you know, that's really, really good because we've actually, from our market research, realised that a lot of our customers are actually Tesco shoppers. And in fact, Tesco is the only Irish supermarket that has a dedicated uh, meat-free or de vegetarian section. Through social media, we can reach lots of customers. Uh, we can reach lots of customers, say, from Super Value Trim. We can go on their Facebook page and post as these say, look, there's a special offer in Super Value today. Uh, we can link in with other vegan events that are in. We were invited to attend a, a vegan mass in there in Stockholm. <coughs> Again, we didn't attend, but we had a presence on their Facebook page, which meant we could interact with all those people. And we're also on Twitter. So we actually use Twitter to really get in contact with customers. Um, people, they're almost like mini sales reps. Someone would tweet from a supermarket, go, oh, I'm in. Duns in Bangladesh, I can't find your products. So you can just go back, okay, they're down in aisle six by the suits. Or someone else <coughs> might be, you know, I'm in such a shop and they don't have your products, and well, ask the manager to order them in. Or, you know, there, it just generates a bit of a buzz as well. Um, I find Twitter very good for peer interactions as well. So interactions with other food companies and maybe digital marketing companies, that would be online as well. And that's where we're based. Now I'll just go into um, our Facebook page here. So how many of you are actually on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to um, like our page, it's facebook.com forward slash these whole foods. Now Facebook is quite a good marketing tool in that it allows you to really, really tell a story. So like you can go back, back all the way back to 2007 when the company started in the farmers markets and you could build your timeline from all the different events and what was going on. Um, like today I actually have posted a link for you guys here. Um, it's from the Bordvia 
region brand forum. So there's some good information on that if you want to click on and download some notes on social media from another event that I did there uh, last year. Uh, so from Facebook, we get really good insights of what, what our customers are looking for and what they're not looking for. We posted up uh, yesterday a photo album, which gets, seems to get good traction and a lot of likes from people <coughs> when there's more than one photo just posted up. So that was about a vegetarian butcher um, a products that we found at a trade fair. Again, we, we can kind of see that, okay, lots of people like that. And from the insights, you know, I might say something about, oh, meat is, meat is bad or something, you know, something kind of negative. And you'll see that doesn't get a whole lot of likes. So you can kind of say, okay, people don't really like a preachy social welfare or a social welfare dip, a preachy social media page. Um, you know, but they really seem to like recipes. They really seem to like healthy eating tips. Um, so yeah, so I kind of use Instagram as well. So like I'm, I'm cooking at home all the time anyway. So it's quite easy just to take a picture of something that you've cooked. Uh, put it up on Instagram and uh, have that already linked into your Facebook page. So when I think when I update a status on my Facebook page, it is automatically set up to uh, tweet it as well. So you get a lot of inbound coming from Twitter onto your Facebook page. So like you see here, interaction with a super value. Um, this is a chain of six super values in Wexford. So we did some targeted. Uh, we promoted a post, which is this paid advertising that, that Facebook um, has brought in recently. So we just did this. You'll see there's four shares, uh, four comments. Um, I think the stats on that, it doesn't actually show up there. It was 23,000 people saw that particular post through paid advertising. So if it's quite targeted, it seems to work. Um, and just some like healthy eating tips. And that's that's basically what we what we do with Facebook. Um, I posted up an essay I wrote when I was 10 on <coughs> healthy eating that I found uh, so that uh, that's got a lot of likes and I think it's important to keep it kind of personal and not be really corporate and you know kind of uh, you know just because you're interacting with people so it's important that your own personality shines through. But obviously there is a borderline like we wouldn't be saying to people, oh God I just I need some coffee or you know something like really boring and um, nobody really wants to uh, listen to that. Um, so on, we also use other other things like slide share. So when we put up a presentation on slide share or a list of our stops, so we can easily share that link around via Twitter, uh, via LinkedIn, um, via Facebook as well. Um, LinkedIn is quite good for you know joining interest groups. So you could join a group, say vegans and vegetarians, or you could join a group or food industry trends or something like that. So you could, you can post content there, and that will link back to either your Facebook page or your website or wherever you want to get the, the marketing. Uh, uh, just a blog where I post up uh, different recipes and just kind of talk about diff different topics. Uh, the blog is quite good because you can see what people are searching for and what, why they're landing on your page. So it, it gives a really good insight as to what customers are actually looking for and what they're interested in. And from that, you can kind of tailor then going back to your Facebook posts and what you can, you can do uh, that would interest people. Um, here is the last year. A, around Christmas time, so you can tailor things to the seasons as well. Um, so we did a festive sweet potato tofu roast. So these are the old kind of recipes that I kind of worked on, and uh, the, the pictures to win like that. So with the pictures as well on blogs, what Google is finding more and more is if you tag, um, like if you tag the pictures, it saves them on your computer and you're uploading them and you fill in all the little tags, that the images are coming up now in Google Image Search. So that's kind of important not to just upload a blank picture and not have a description uh, or something on it. So that's, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, I mentioned the survey, survey Monkey is very good. 